Good morning, class. My name is Miss C, and I'm going to be your teacher today. You know what time it is, New Year's resolutions. It's when you sit down, take time to reevaluate your life, and think about what kind of changes you want to make. For example, maybe you want to stop pissing off cops. We have a very important topic to cover today, so let's not waste any time at all and get straight to the point. You should never let your kids ride in a vehicle without seatbelts on. No one can prepare for any unexpected or sudden stops. But your problem is when your vehicle gets sidelined or flipped over. The kid flies out of the window or gets ejected through the windshield and ends up in a tree, in a ditch, or in a body of water if you're by the highway. Remember, you can't control other people's behavior but you can control your own. How often do parents think it's okay to use the cop threat to scare their misbehaving kids? It may sound like a good idea, but what you're doing, first of all, is traumatizing them at such a young age. That is not a good start at early childhood development. That'll screw up a kid, it really will. You don't want to be instilling fear into them and make them fear the cops. You want to teach kids that they can rely on cops for help. The idea is to improve the barrier between cops and the general population, which is not easy to do these days, especially with the low economy and a crazy population escalating. How many times has a cop walked into a public place like a store or a restaurant, then someone starts going nuts, grabbing their friend's arm, and says, It's him! It's him! He's the one! Without even thinking about it, because it is uncommon to see cops out in public places, so they automatically assume that they're there to nab someone. That's usually the case, but for the most part, man, you can't even let a homie have some lunch in peace. How many times have you been in a situation where you think you're going to get jammed up? So you start being all buddy-buddy and ask, oh, hey, do you know Officer Blank? And expecting it to be some kind of magic spell. Well, that is pointless because first of all, it is between you two. So whether they know so-and-so or not, it is unrelated to the interaction on hand and shouldn't influence their decision on whether to troll you or not. There's a time and place for that. If you're actually having a casual conversation, it's okay to ask about their friends. But if you're getting trolled on, deal with it like a mature person. This segment contains comments and opinions that some viewers may find offensive. Viewer discretion is advised. This is something that only happens in the winter. It has been happening for a while now, so it is something I feel obligated to speak out about. This is about reading numerous reports of unattended cars that go missing while being warmed up. The statistics and lame excuse of the day posted with the list of precautions each time. Reading about it day after day for weeks, it is getting quite annoying to hear about this constantly occurring, especially after multiple warnings and prevention tips have been given. I think it should have been typed in caps lock and addressed to the stupid population. I have to say, there is a fine line between being forced out of the car at gunpoint and leaving an idle, unattended vehicle as an invitation for carjacking and muggers. You are not a victim. Of all words to choose from, victim is not one of them and completely far from it. I'd say troublemaker is more accurate. How about these individuals start being more considerate of officers by realizing they're a part of the problem? Instead of chasing after a missing vehicle, you do realize they could have been out there focusing on catching actual criminals, right? But the problem is 
they got to call out to these stupid car problems. If it was me, I'd say just disregard those calls altogether. The next time it happens, just leave them in the cold. And while those idiots are all walking to work every day, they can all think about why it is that they need so much attention. I feel sorry for the other motorists who have to deal with a jacked up insurance bill as a result of those idiots. I feel sorry for the cops who have to deal with the attention seeking trolls every morning. I feel sorry for the vehicles who ran away from home to get away from their stupid human and the vehicles who got abducted by psychos who want to use them for road rage, drunk driving, B&E and more muggings that put the whole city in danger and turn the streets into a three ring circus. So why don't you take some time and realize who the real victims are? If you engage in this type of behavior, I hope you take this lecture as an opportunity to realize that you've done wrong before and change to become a better person.